let's talk 145 pounds. So the main event, the world championship, which adds to it the flavor and the flair of coming off of a great season of the Ultimate Fighter, but Volkanovski and Ortega. Now, Volkanovski is going to have to be very careful. If he's not very careful, he is going to become the greatest featherweight of all time. He is in that discussion now. He just does not have the longevity of, say, Jose Aldo, who did it for 11 years. And you pass the torch into Connor in there for a cup of coffee. You pass it over to, to Max Holloway, who Volkanovski's already been in there a couple of times with. Volkanovski is a problem in every sense of the word. And he comes from a rugby background. Ariel teases me for always telling this story that Volkanovski used to weigh 96 kilograms, which converts to a 211 pounds. But I think that's extremely relevant to us to look at the discipline that it took a 211 pound man to convert his body to 145 pounds is extremely evident in the cardiovascular display that he has as an athlete. Volkanovski goes as hard as anybody. And that's sometimes hard to see if you're a viewer. You see the left hand, you see the body shot. That is kind of hard. You go watch a Volkanovski fight and you go, wait a minute. He threw 20 more punches than the other guy in the last minute. And there's been 15 minutes. He threw another 100 punches in his opponent. That's what Volkanovski does. Volkanovski busted on the scene for me when he was brought in, in my opinion, to be a lamb, to go to slaughter against Chad Money Mendez. I remember when that fight was going, Volkanovski, guy from New Zealand, he's going to get crushed. And he ends up putting a pretty good ass whipping on Chad. And it even made Chad second guess his career. Now, Chad did not know at the time, hey, I just lost to not only the best in the world, I lost to possibly the best to have ever done it. Chad knew what I knew, which is, hey, this kind of unknown guy just got the jump on me. Okay, but this is still where Volkanovski jumps off the page. And he put a pressure and he dealt with a pressure from Chad. And not very many people can. Nobody can match Chad's strength. And most people can't match his endurance. He's a great competitor. And Volkanovski did. Okay, so now I know who Volkanovski is. But when you do look at this output, I don't know where his weaknesses are. I don't know that I could I, I could wisely advise an athlete. If I'm coaching the athlete, hey, go out and take this guy down. I don't see those openings. I don't see where Volkanovski gets extended, where you can come under, you can slip by something, you can get to the body, you can get to the hips. I don't see these opportunities. Hey, if he gets on top, you know, you got to worry about the elbows, but don't worry about him passing. No, that's not true. He'll elbow you while he's passing, Khabib style. He'll come back, look look to transition to a full mount, start threatening arm triangles. I mean, he, he's a problem everywhere. He was a nuisance everywhere. He can take a hell of a shot. Oh, by the way, he's coming forward. I mean, he's shown in his progression a little bit of everything. He's dealt with the reach of Max Holloway. He's dealt with the power of Money Mendes. I mean, he's shown a little bit of everything. And if he's not careful, he is going to be recognized as the greatest 45-pounder out there. But hold that thought. And you want to know why? I think Ortega beats him. I think Ortega beats him. Let me tell you guys what I know, okay? I was on vacation. And I'm not vacation guy. But I got my wife out of town, and uh, John Bardis had a place, and he let us stay in, and we got to San Diego, we had a vacation. I get a phone call from Daryl, Christian, Coach Daryl. Coach says, uh, hey, you're only about 20 minutes away uh, before I'm going to be trained. I'm going to do a private workout if you would like to come watch. I said, yeah, I, I think I would. Who's going to be there? He says, well, TJ Dillashaw. This is before TJ had his comeback fight with Sanhagen. This is just when TJ's making the comebacks. That's interesting to me. I haven't got to see TJ in a long time. Juan Archuleta, who was the sitting Bellator champion, and Brian Ortega. I said, what? The, the, these three killers are, uh, are going to come do a workout that only I'm going to be able to see? All right. Now, I can't tell you guys anything that happened in the workout. I just can't. It's the rule. But I will tell you that Brian Ortega has only had one problem in his entire fight career. It, it happened in round four against Max Holloway, where Max was just too much. It was too much output, and Ortega even talked about it. And Ortega said, man, I was so tired. Not only could I not hit him, 
I could not hold my hands up to block him from hitting me. Now, that is as straightforward and accurate of an assessment as you could possibly give yourself. That is what happened. Max was able to outwork him. Max had been in that spot before he understood what it took. He, he managed his energy. He was just in overall better shape. That's true. All I will tell you about this workout that I saw is that Ortega has fixed that problem. That's all I can tell you. Ortega will not be outworked or shut down 20 and 23 and 24 minutes in. And that is saying a lot when you're dealing with somebody with the absolute aggression of Volkanovski. I really believe that, though. I really believe, based on what I saw, I really, I really do believe that Ortega was able to assess that and fix that within himself. I am not ready to tell you that Brian Ortega is a better fighter. I'm not. Volkanovski is a different animal as an athlete. As pure testosterone that is going through his body, he is a different, create a different wand waved over him. But Ortega's dynamic, and Ortega doesn't go away, and he'll hit you just hard enough, and he'll threaten you with that ground game just enough that you think twice about going there. It's a very, very interesting match, which is going to beg the question, right? You're going to have a lot of eyeballs on this, and it's not just because of these guys. You also have Diaz and the bullet on it, right? you got a lot of help. It's not just fight week. It's international fight week. It's a big damn deal. So whoever gets blessed with this spot, and it's these two, and whoever comes out of that, what do they do next? And as you look at 145 pounds, I mean, look, Giga has been insulting Max Holloway, and he's been getting away with it. But you're only going to back Max into a corner and have him be polite for so long. Something tells me Giga is getting to the end of that rope. Now, Max, before he responds to Giga and gives Giga what he wants, and what Giga's trying to lure him into is a number one contender's fight. Very smart move by Giga. Everything Giga does. I love everything this guy does. But I love that he's calculated. I love that he has a plan. He's trying to lure Max into a number one contender's fight. Max might be in a spot where he doesn't have to fight Giga and gets to go on and fight the winner of Volkanovski or Tag if he just keeps his mouth shut, doesn't add any fuel to the fire that Giga's starting and can just buy himself a week, he could find himself in a championship spot. So that's what you have going at 145 pounds. But that's a lot of ifs. That's a lot of buts. If Ortega gets the jump on Volkanovski, I think Volkanovski probably gets that rematch. What's that means for Max? Right? It's one of those things. Max has already fought both of these guys in Ortega and Volkanovski. Are you looking for some parity? Are you looking for some fresh blood? What kind of damage are these guys going to take? How long of a layoff are they going to need? I don't know these answers, and neither do you, but these are the reasons why we can't put all these places in. It's also why it's very smart of Giga to align himself on a guy whose dance card is open and who for sure will make you the number one contender. So there's a few moving parts here. The focus is on 145 pounds. The culmination of many, many months of an ultimate fighter season is all going to come to a head. And when it's done, you're going to be left with the same question regardless of outcome, which is who is next?